So, let's go ahead and repair that broken bootloader. Your computer's not going or booting back into Linux because, well, Windows did a massive feature update and it overwrote your bootloader. Or vice versa, you install Linux and it overwrote Windows and you can't get back into that. Well, Super Grub Disk is what we're talking about in today's video. It is a fantastic tool to recover any of these dual or even tri-boot scenarios where you can go ahead and get back into whatever system you want and then repair it. So in this video, I'll be going over one, downloading and installing it on a USB drive, booting back into our system, and then doing a sample repair. Now, I'm not gonna cover every single scenario of the repair, but I will put links in the description on how to repair both Grub and the Windows boot partition. Uh, so if you have any issues or you're missing a step in this video, refer to those videos if uh, this does not work for you. But this is for your average scenario where Windows does a feature update, overrides Linux, uh, bootloader, and you can't get back into your Linux instance. So this will fix that. And with that, let's go ahead, jump on the desktop and get into this. Okay, to start out here, you'll probably notice a little bit of an overlay on this video. This is my Twitch overlay. Uh, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can go over to Twitch and subscribe for free and have the possibility of being immortalized on one of my videos here. But with that said, let's get into actually creating our grub disk. So we're going to go to supergrubdisk.org. And from here, we're going to go to download and then super grub disk beta. And then we're presented with this screen and then just scroll all the way down and download the zip file. The zip file is really nice because it's like literally only eight megs or so. So we'll click download that and then flip over to our file browser in our downloads folder. You'll see this right here. We're going to go ahead and extract here. And we're going to write this out to our thumb drive. So with this extracted, uh, you'll see that it is now 317 megabytes instead of the 7.8. Uh, heck of a compression uh, ratio on that uh, zip file, which makes it really nice for downloading on anywhere. So uh, we'll come back to our terminal and go ahead and write this out to our disk. First, let's figure out what disk we have. So we're going to go sudo blkid type in our password and I just want to see where that actual disk is and I don't see it actually in here now if you're you are using Windows to recover your bootloader that is also fine I recommend Rufus it would work just fine with the IMG file so uh, very cool so I've plugged this in again let's see if we have it on here now so using this I can see that it's dev sddd and that's a VFAT and it's labeled Arch at the moment. Um, so I was using this to install Arch Linux last. So very important when you do this command, you get the proper device. Extremely, extremely important. Because I had another video where I accidentally, uh, well, let's just say I, I did SDA. And that was my backup drive, which didn't end well. So let's go ahead and write this image out. We're going to go ahead and pop over to our downloads folder and we're going to do disk destroyer. It actually stands for something different, but it's that's what I like to call it just because uh, it will destroy your disk. So we'll do IF for input file equals and then we'll pick out that uh, that file name. So if we look supergrub2.img is our file and then of equals and this is where you put the actual device dev sdd now you don't need to put a one or a two because it's going to wipe out all the partitions and everything in there now typically i would just go ahead and hit run on this but first we need to elevate to sudo because we're not running as root and then the last setting that we could also, if you have problems, I like to do block size or BS equals 1M for one megabyte block sizes. This right here is the ideal way to write an image to a drive. It's faster than anything you can see in Windows, and this is how you do it in Linux. Uh, very intuitive once you understand all the context that I just laid out. So let's do that and write our drive. So there we go. It just wrote. 300 megs in 2.1 seconds. So this whole drive 
is ready to be booted. So we're just going to go ahead and go right into a reboot of our system and see if we can't boot into Super Grub now. So we'll go ahead, go up to there, and hit restart. And it's restarting. I believe it's F11 for my boot menu on this machine, but let's see. And there's F11. We're going to try and hit it. Kind of do a tap. We have the SDD and then the SanDisk. Cool thing about Super Grub is it does both Legacy and UEFI uh, when it does that flash. So this should get us to get going. If this doesn't work, we'll try Partition 2. So let's try Partition 1 first. And there we go. Uh, the neat thing about this is when you have a broken bootloader and you have Super Grub, is it automatically detects and shows all the different boot methods for this machine. So let's go ahead and detect and show all the boot methods we, we can go for. So it kind of detects everything. It looks a little bit like uh, a bunch of gibberish on the screen, but I want to walk through what's going on here. It detects on hard drive 2, there's a GPT or UEFI boot. This is really, really cool, and we can actually boot directly to this. It also detected... It, this, this is actually the same one, just kind of listed twice. So these are the operating systems that are listed. Now, if Windows was on this machine in a dual boot, it would also go like HD3, uh, partition GPT2, or whatever it might be, and it would say Windows and, and kind of give you a Windows notification, which is really, really neat. You can also do edit, edit the actual configuration files from here, which is great, um, but this will get you back to Linux if Windows overwrites your bootloader or uh, you lose bootloaders on both Windows and Linux, you can boot into here, click it, and it'll go ahead and boot into your actual Linux partition. So it's really, really powerful stuff. Uh, a great way to get back into your system should you mess up your bootloader. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot directly from this to, to kind of showcase it. So I'm already in my display manager and I can just log in. And now that we're back on the desktop, everything's kind of right with the world. So very, very neat. And, and one other thing I wanted to showcase as well, um, from here you can repair Grub uh, now that you're back into here, just by doing a, a Grub install. Or or if you don't want to go into Terminal, you can actually use Grub Customizer. So I'm going to pull this up and see if we have Grub Customizer on here. And if you're in Debian or Ubuntu or any of the those base distributions, APT install Grub Customizer, it does require a PPA to actually get working. And I'll put that up on the screen right now so you could PPA and then do grub install of the customizer. So, And you'll see that it's actually already installed and it, this would just reinstall it. We don't wanna do that, so we're gonna go ahead and exit out. But that's the package grub customizer on Arch Linux machines or Manjaro machines. You can just go ahead and install this relatively easily. We'll go ahead and launch into grub customizer. We need to authenticate and close this guy out. And you'll see, here's all my boot options. And this is very, very powerful because I can change everything here or take one menu and move it up or remove bad grub entries. And as soon as I do any changes and I hit save, this actually goes through and remakes grub. So it'll reinstall grub for you just by clicking save. You don't even have to make any changes. You can just click save and it'll, it'll go ahead and do that. You also have different settings so you can actually pick which setting you'd like it to be which is great um and it'll you can change the display all that or take off quiet if i wanted a little more noisy boot to see exactly what i what's going on during boot you might remove this little toggle and just delete that um, and that would actually give you all of the readout on your screen instead of making it pretty but it's kind of needed for troubleshooting when grub just refuses to boot which is, is very nice. With this, everything is pretty much set and ready to go. And from here, we'd have a functional system and we can boot back in. Uh, the cool thing is if this was Windows, I made a whole video about repairing the Windows boot partition. Um, I'll go ahead and link that up top as well. So definitely check it out if you're having problems with the Windows bootloader because Super Grub can fix both Windows and Linux and even Mac. So 
a uh, very, very powerful tool that I want to go ahead and showcase. Now, if you can't boot back into your system at all and Grub's not working, they do have other features on here, which I'm not going to show in the video today, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up just so you know that it exists. I don't think it will, but just in case it does fail you, they have Rescatux. And this is kind of a cool uh, feature. It'll actually fix Grub bootloader from a live ISO environment. Basically what that means is you boot into Rescatux, you hit fix, and it fixes it for you. Uh, here's its little uh, GUI. And basically you boot it up, this pops up, and then you click run, and it fixes your Grub customizer, or, or basically your Grub environment for you. So uh, very powerful. But at the same time, I don't like to do this way. I like to actually boot into my systems and fix them from there. However, if that doesn't work for you, Rescatux is a secondary option, which is also very, very good. So now we've repaired our dual boot system. Everything is right with the world. I always like to save this and just have this thumb drive ready to go anytime I need, especially on any systems I'm dual booting because inevitably Windows will do something to mess up other bootloaders. It's just how Windows works. So I like to just have this available anytime I have a dual boot system and I highly recommend you keeping it. But with all that said, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. As always, look forward to reading the comments. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.